Whatever time you live in, right? It's always the worst. It's always, it's always like this pandemic is the worst thing we have experienced. I wasn't alive during World War II. If we look at history, there was good reason for almost every generation to believe, hey, this is it. It can't get no worse than this. And um, that might give us a better perspective. And the, and the real reason, I guess, that this is ultimately important is that there's so much misinformation and um, conspiracy theories regarding the vaccine and COVID and Mark of the Beast. And I'll, I don't care which way you lean on the vaccine. But what I do think is important is that we get a better perspective on truth. And then you can make your decision from there. But that would that would be where I would start. There was a couple of scriptures on Mark of the Beast. So I'll just read a couple because this will lead us in. So Revelations 20 and 4 says, And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. And then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads, on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. All right. So just off the top, it's very specific in scripture where this mark will be. Revelations 13, 16 and 17 says this, speaking of the beast from the earth says, he causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Okay, one more. Revelations 14, 11 and 12 says, and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image. And whoever receives the mark of his name, here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So there will be those who worship the beast and his image. So I'll just say this, regardless, of, like I said, which way somebody leans on the vaccine. If you're a Christian and your pastor has received the vaccine, uh, I guess you should probably stop going to that church. Because scripture says that if the vaccine is, I mean, if that were the mark of the beast, those who receive this mark worship the beast. Right. That seems to be a conflict of interest. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Exactly. Well, you know, you, you literally have, uh, there, there are Christians that are literally out there telling people that if they get the vaccine, that they have no chance of being saved, that they've taken the mark of the beast. This is why this is, Again, as Alex said, if, if 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 you just don't trust the vaccine, you feel like uh, it might make you sicker or whatever, and that's your reasons, then so be it. Uh, but to spread misinformation that is theological uh, or even false, just entirely false, such as changing your DNA and scaring people that can have potential life-threatening uh, consequences uh, in, in their lives and in their family, then that's not cool. And, and the reality is, is, is that, um, and I just did a video actually on the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. uh, all of the evidence shows from, from that period of time, we're talking about uh, the, um, the, uh, the late 90s. Um, all of that, all of the mark of the beast deals with is uh, emperor worship uh, at that time. And there were a number of ways in which emperors uh, received worship. And, uh, you know, obviously not only through statues of themselves, but also tribute coins. Uh, I went over those things. Uh, we talked about the economic impact uh, that um, that it had on Christians who were part of trade guilds uh, who would not uh, participate in sacrificing or worshiping emperors, uh, that they uh, were dismembered uh, or not dismembered, but they were uh, they, they were put out of these guilds and these guilds impacted their ability to be able uh, to trade and to be able to uh, participate in the market economy whereby they were selling their craft or their particular skill. We actually literally have evidence uh, from antiquity showing that. We've got evidence of a choir in Pergamum uh, where one of the churches, uh, seven churches were, uh, a choir in Pergamum uh, that actually sang 
uh, worship songs to the emperor. So all of these things were happening at that time. It doesn't point to any particular future time. It points to the tribulation that believers were enduring at that time and the, the threat of emperor worship. And uh, and then not only that, here's another interesting thing. Um, somebody asked, uh, and I didn't get the chance to cover this in uh, the video that I did on the Mark of the Beast, but uh, somebody asked me recently, well, why does it say um, that the mark will be put on the, the front, on the forehead, and on the right hand. And um, I had already explained that all of that really deals with worship. But the reason why it says that is a person has to keep in mind the literary writing style of the writer, the author, and the author is John. John is a Jew. And for John and John's audience, which was primarily uh, Jewish Christians and even some Gentile Christians, they would have been familiar with the Shema. Hear, O Israel, right. the Lord your God is one Lord, and you shall worship the Lord your God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And as you read the Shema, Deuteronomy 6, 4 through uh, 9, uh, not only is it about worship and the exclusive worship of Yahweh, but specifically, this is what it actually says in verse 8, um, that Yahweh instructed the Israelites to create reminders of his word. He says, put it, put it on your doorpost, the mezuzah, when you go in and out. But look at what he says in verse 8. Bind them as a sign on your hand and let them be a symbol on your forehead. And so hand and forehead have to do with worship. At the end of the day, that's what it's about. So when it was related to the worship of Yahweh, it was designed to be these frontlets and these phylacteries were designed to be reminders of Israelites to worship Yahweh alone, right? And so John uses, again, he knows that his audience is familiar with, with the phraseology forehead and hand and that they would link that to the idea of worship. And so this deals with the worship of the emperor which would have suggested to Christians that that would not be being loyal to Yahweh, that that worshiping the emperor is to be disloyal to Christ, right? The one true God. So that's what that's really about. And it's it, a vaccine. There's no microchip uh, there, there. You know, all that other nonsense. Uh, that's foolishness. And uh, and people who uh you know, who are interpreting scripture. They're using sensationalism. It's the akin of having the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other, uh, like um, Herbert Armstrong was doing in the 60s and 70s with the Armstrong Church of God cult. All of that was built on uh, current events. He claimed to be the voice of prophecy, to know what was going on. Same thing with uh, Ellen G. White. You'll notice that all of these cults typically take end time events and that's how they create fear and that's how they create loyalty because they claim that the only way to be saved is to be part of our group and listen to the messenger, listen to the message. And, and uh, you've got to be really, really careful. Amen. This is actually a lot less complicated than people make it because most of the people who are making that claim, the people who are making it too, haven't read just these three scriptures. There's more we could read, but just if we think about it logically, on top of what you said, it would also mean that those who receive the <clears throat> mark of the beast don't keep the commandments of God or don't have faith in Jesus. You can't, based on scripture, you can't do both. Mm -hmm. So once again, you know, you either have to consider me a heretic at this point, if that's what somebody oh, believes, God. or, you know, the scripture is not very uh, open to options there. And so, you know, this age of information and misinformation has just, made people so confused and well, who was it uh copeland he said he needs more money for a new jet because he can't fly on the, on the regular planes because uh you know he he doesn't want to get the shot and he considers that the mark of the beast like th this that's the type of stuff which when you when you're saying that from a pulpit i saw somebody in the comments saying you know when you're saying this from a pulpit to a body of believers who are trusting you to guide them in the right direction <sighs> It's, it's, it's dangerous. That's, and that's, that's a, that's a nice way of saying it. Absolutely. Absolutely.